take it high. We're going up, riding to the sky. That's what I love Cause I can take you there and never bring you back. Turn your dreams into reality if you believe in that. It's a bar to the eye. It ain't swag. Who that is? Hey, what's going on, guys? This your girl, KK Rena. Ain't nobody sweeter, so don't forget it, alright? <laughs> guys, I am so happy to be back with NCAA 13. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of uh, Midwest Rivalries. I'm back at it, so let's get to it. This time, we've got Iowa um, Hawkeyes against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And this is a rivalry that has uh, that actually sparked um, in 1934 and the trophy started up the next year in 1935 so you see how far back these two schools go you know unlike the rivalry between um, Nebraska and Iowa this is actually a truly long-standing rivalry and it's a very very funny story so I'm going to get to it in a moment um, right now Minnesota leads us and wins and uh, currently they do have a streak on us they have won the last two games i was a little bit surprised that they won last year but they pulled it out so what can i say if anything we are very inconsistent and we are definitely loving being the underdogs <laughs> um i won't lie to you i don't enjoy losing games but you know still i love the hot guys and that is that. So, basically, every year, the Hawkeyes and the Golden Gophers play for a trophy called the Floyd of Ro Rosedale. Floyd of Rosedale, sorry. Um, <laughs> and it's a bronze trophy that is in the shape of a pig and is awarded to the winner of the rivalry football game that is played annually between the Hawkeyes and the Golden Gophers. So, Here's the history, here's the story, okay? In 1934, uh, the football game between the Hawkeyes and the Golden Gophers had been filled with controversy over the treatment of Iowa star halfback Ozzie Simmons. Now, Simmons was also one of the few black football players of that era, and during that game, he was roughed up several times, took several hits by the Gophers, and he was forced to leave, leave the game multiple times in Minnesota's 48-12 uh, victory. So Simmons said himself that what it amounted to was that they were piling on late hits and that he had bruised ribs and they were coming at him with knees high and most of it was pretty obvious. Now the following year, the Golden Gophers coach Bernie Bierman were 5-0. And the Hawkeyes coach at that time, Ozzy Solomons, the Hawkeyes were basically 4-1, uh, and one, I believe. Um, now, before the 1935 Iowa-Minnesota contest in Iowa City, Berman had received a flood of threatening letters from Iowa fans because of the treatment of Simmons. And he requested and received special police protection for the team when it detrained in Iowa a couple days before the contest that year. Now, the day before the game, Iowa's governor, Clyde L. Herring, told reporters, if the officials stand for any rough tactics like Minnesota used last year, I am sure that the crowd won't. Herring's message was clear. What he was saying was, if you treat Ozzy like you treated him last year, we're coming out of the stands, Simmons said himself. Now that news quickly reached Minnesota, and Coach Bierman threatened to break off all athletic relations with the Hawkeyes. So apparently Minnesota Attorney General Peterson practically accused the Iowa governor of thuggery, saying, you know, you're acting like a thug. You remarked that during the Iowa-Minnesota game, you're not going to stand for any rough tactics, but you're trying to incite a riot. And that's a breach of your duty as a governor, and it, it evidences unsportsmanlike, cowardly, and contemptible frame of mind that you have. So, to lighten the mood, Minnesota Governor Floyd Olson sent a telegram to Governor Herring 
on game day morning, which read, Minnesota folks are excited about your statement about the Iowa crowd lynching the Minnesota football team. We have assured them that you are law-abiding gentlemen only trying to get our goat. I will pre- I will bet you a Minnesota prize hog against an Iowa prize hog that Minnesota wins. So, of course, our governor at that time accepted. And the word of the bet reached Iowa City just as people were crowding into the stadium. Things calmed down and the game went untroubled and Minnesota won that game 13-6. And Ozzy Simmons played an injury-free game. Afterwards, Minnesota players went out of their way to compliment Simmons, and Simmons praised the Gophers for their clean, hard-fought play. <laughs> Minnesota went on to win their second straight national championship. So, Governor Herring obtained an award-winning prize pig, which had been donated by Alan Loomis, who was the owner of Rosedale Farms near Fort Dodge, Iowa. And if you're from Iowa, then you know where Fort Dodge is. I do, I've been there a couple times myself. Dubbed Floyd after Minnesota Governor Olson, the pig was actually the brother of Blue Boy from the movie State Fair. Um, a few years later, Governor Herring collected Floyd of Rosedale and personally walked him onto uh, Governor Olson's carpeted office. <laughs> so... That is the story behind the Floyd of Rosedale Trophy. And it's funny to me, you know, how sports can get everybody worked up and riled up and ready to punch somebody in the face or ready to treat somebody really nasty or whatever it might be. You know, I think that it's important that people play sports as children. And a lot of times in video games, just like um, just like one of my subscribers and also um, one of my YouTube friends was saying on their video that, you know, FPS, um, first person shooter games and um, the gaming community for, you know, because we're mostly comprised of children and, that don't get outside and play. Um, <laughs> Usually, you know, there's some really bad, you know, losing going on. You know, it's really hard for kids to lose these days. And I told him, you know, I played sports as a child. I learned to lose in a good way. You know, you have to lose in order to learn from your mistakes. You know, you can't always play a perfect game. Losing is just as important as winning. Because if you never know what it is that you need to work on, then, you know, and I'm not saying that people that win all the time are not good at what they do. Obviously, they are because it takes a lot of practice and a lot of uh, teamwork. But when you're playing video games, you don't, you know, you might have to practice a lot, but there is no teamwork. It's always me. I, you know, I don't need anybody. You know, I can go play Kill Confirmed and fucking get a Moab and we'll lose the game but who fucking gives a shit because I have a Moab you know and that kind of train of thought is horrible <laughs> it's just horrible you know um I've gotten a Moab several times um I'm not exactly sure how many but you know i I'm, I'm pretty sure it's less than 10 <laughs> Guardian has gotten you know over 150 Moabs, so, you know, he's a really, really great player, and he does it naturally, but me, myself, I do have to work at it, you know, I do have to work on it, I'm not always a consistent player, and I play for fun, so winning is not Im as important to me as having fun at the game, but I would rather win than be selfish, you can see what I'm saying, I'd rather play as a team and win as a team than be selfish and go get a Moab and everybody loses. So, those are the things I think that kids need to learn. Me and Guardian are struggling with our son, trying to let him know, yes, mommy and daddy too do play video games a lot, but, you know, as children, we didn't sit here and do nothing. You know, we have to go to work, we have to do things for you and with you, and you need to go outside and play, and you need to enjoy being a child, you know, um, because things are so different now. Things are so different. 
when we were kids, we didn't have all this technology, you know, just crowding our judgment and filling our mind with nothing but, you know, video games. And I think that I've said this so many times. Parents, what are you doing? Don't raise vampires. Get your kids out of the house. Make sure that they play sports. Sports can teach your kids things that are very important, you know? Sports education is just as important, I think, as school education. Neither is more important than the other, and they need each other. You have to get good grades to stay in sports, and you should have sports to learn how to manage um, your life because there are going to be more than one thing that you want to do as you get older. And you have to be able to balance work with whatever it is that your hobby is, whatever it is that you love to do, you know, because most of us are not going to go on to be, (laughs) most of us are not going to go on to be pro uh, sports players. So, you know what I mean? Um, It's stuff like that that we need to teach our children. But anyways, I'm done blabbering on and on. I really, really appreciate you guys um, listening to this commentary and... I hope, I really hope you liked it. So, you know, if you did, go ahead and leave a like. Friends, loves, butt faces, I'm out of here. Until next time. Hey guys, KK Rena here. If you missed the previous vid, you can check it out now. And if you want more of me, don't forget to subscribe. Been Thank here you. so long, but I'm waiting for I'm you. I'm waiting for oh, you. Boy, I don't even breathe no more Cause I want you to walk away So I stay here instead